okay if your eardrums have stopped bleeding we can crack straight uh, back into the show Roy what's your next topic I think it's your turn now yeah, one of the things I found out today uh, surprised me a bit because it's the 5th of July so I thought some people still take the day off uh, Toyota has just joined the uh, the Linux Foundation uh, as a some participating member or I don't, I don't really know I, I think it's under the umbrella of the whole kind of uh, uh, vehicles uh, with a unified platform that's based on Linux and I think Intel is one of the main players there uh, so as you probably know Toyota is a good partner of Microsoft and uh, this was especially emphasized when Toyota had the issues with the brakes uh, last year was it last year maybe no. I think it was sorry yeah. you, you, I think it was um, you were just cutting out very yeah. briefly there yeah. so Toyota was basically having some problems with brakes and then people were trying to find out uh, what operating system was used and I, I, I know personally that not only do they have the radios coming with support for Microsoft proprietary formats and they have all those deals with Microsoft but they also used to depend a lot on Windows. From my point of view, the fact that Toyota was joining the uh, uh, Linux Foundation was a sign of them kind of moving towards something else or considering a different route. Uh, the other two companies I can think of which work closely with Microsoft and cars uh, is Ford, because they have this thing called Sync, which kind of stink. Uh, and, and yeah, I wrote quite a bit about it for all sorts of reasons, uh, least of which was the fact that the... Uh, Plus weekly podcast was really pimping this stuff out, even though it's proprietary, it doesn't work with Linux and so on. And it was really strange when they put it on the Floss shell advertisement for Microsoft. But uh, the other the other company I can think of is uh, is Kia, Kaya, the I think it's Korean, uh, and they had a deal, I believe, that they put Windows somewhere in the car, but. Uh, you know, people say Microsoft is taking over cars, and because they read those press releases as though it's all true and and generalizable. But the truth is, uh, very few cars have Windows in them. They usually have some proprietary. You know, you, you couldn't pro- press Control or Delete on a car. So you, you you wouldn't think about doing that. <laughs> so you, you know, you you, uh, uh, you have these. Uh, usually, it used to be proprietary very simple, very robust uh, operating systems, but they tried to build something that's based on Linux, and I think lots of cars are going to run Linux. Uh, I don't know what hardware. But. It will be very interesting to see what Microsoft does. We've already seen what Microsoft does to uh, phone manufacturers that ship Linux. Yeah, um, but they've gotten weaker, you know. When it comes to the uh, the cloud that they have, the, the threats, you know, if, if they come to a company and say, well, if you don't do this, <laughs> no cheap windows, and those companies say, yeah, whatever, you know, we just use Android. So so now they have a bargaining chip, and they, they actually get more of a competition, and this is what Microsoft was always very afraid of and trying to prevent, but I think they completely lose the battle now, because people start to have choices, uh, simply because especially form factors change, and, you know, cars now, uh, tablets, phones, um, organizers, PDA, well, PDA has kind of died because of phones, but um, you know, no, pe- people can choose something different from Windows, and, and Microsoft knows that, so uh, it, it it's already repelling quite a few companies. So it's it's quite it's quite funny to watch now because I'm used to Microsoft really uh, intimidating and blackmailing companies into doing things, and they just cannot do it anymore. It's just if they can try and do it, they probably won't probably will do more damage than, than good for themselves. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking past some links about uh, about the GNOME KDE desktops. Uh, quite a bit of news there, um, quite a few good things too. Have you had a chance to use GNOME 3? Thanks. Yes, um, albeit um, only courtesy of Fedora 15, I believe, the yeah, late... Probably the best, best place to, to try it. So if you didn't like it there, you, it's probably too early to try it. And, yeah, uh, I um, I think well, I think I mentioned it briefly on the on the previous show, and I haven't had the time to spend looking at this show. And to be fair, um, I'm a big fan of Sabayon. I know that I, I say fan. That's a it's a very bad term because it's uh, I find it invaluable. Um, I'm just waiting to get around to throwing on uh, Sabayon Sabayon back onto my system. Um, I'm currently running yeah. uh, Mint 11 at the moment, which yeah. is very very good actually. Um, I read today that version six of Sabayon was um, 
very suitable for technical users. That's the impression I got, but it's, I think it generally work okay. So it's best of both. It, it's, I mean, it, it, what it does is got all the perks of Gentoo, but with the facility to be very uh, accessible for the new user, like Ubuntu, and it sort of strikes a very nice balance. Um, t- funnily enough, with uh, when I was playing around with uh, Ubuntu and with Mint as well, I actually spent less time setting up the machine with uh, Sabile than I did with um, with Mint, and uh, which was quite strange. Why it's, did you uh, do with Mint? I, I, I suppose well, it's interesting yeah. enough to hear tell- what you. What what you personally do with the computer when you install one of those things? One of the nice things about Sabine, and uh, me, myself and Roy, I think, have um, different views on uh, proprietary software, but uh, one of the nice things with Sabine, when you install it, you can globally accept uh, all the license agreements for any proprietary software you want installed, and it speeds up the process tenfold. Um, everything is, or well, most things that you would need from a system if you want out of the box proprietary drivers running and operating is all handled during install time. So by the time the thing is booted in for the first time, everything is set up for you and there's very little to do. And it's convenience like that, which is a draw for me also the proprietary graphics drivers. So I won't make any excuses. I still use. And, uh, so but I, I know, almost everyone uses them. I, I use them as well. Uh, um, or at least something like uh, firmware or something. It's really hard not to use them. And I, I think you could measure how many people not, do not use them uh, by measuring how many people use a distribution like uh, GNU Sense or uh, I think uh, Triscale is another one of them. Uh, and the BSDs, I believe, do use some firmware. So you, based on the standards of the FSF, they wouldn't be like, you know, free of proprietary drivers. And, and so. Uh, you know, when when you say, oh, so I apologize for using, you know, binary drivers, it's like, no, it's just almost every, even, even Debian comes with quite a few of them. 